Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. Job chapter 29. We're going to shortly. Job was a very, very strange man. We're reading from verse 1 to 4. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, we're reading to 4, but that I were in the months past, in the days when God prayed me, uh -huh, when his candle shined upon my head, now think, just don't rush. When his what candle shined upon my head, that God will shine a candle upon a man's head. And when by his light, not my light, by his light, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. When by his light I walk through darkness, for as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. This was the basis of his results. The Lord shined his candle upon my head. Then the Lord used his light and said, walk through your darkness. Use my light. And then he kept his secrets on my tabernacle. Like you go to your library and you find a book called the secrets of God. You can now begin to read all the exploits that happen. Light, secrets, light, secrets, light. Let me tell you the truth. There are things that are not public. God must come to you and show you. Ephesians chapter 1. Let me show you something and then we'll sit down. Ephesians chapter 1. Mighty God of heaven. From verse eight, wherein he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had proposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he may gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are in the earth, all in him. He says, in whom we have also obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Yeah, this is it. Please, let's go to chapter 3. It just came to my spirit and I thought to share it with us. Verse 2, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, meaning for your sake, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four time in few words, whereby when ye read, 
ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now the verse that I've been looking for is in verse 5. Read with me please. One, two, read. Which in other ages. That means that there are truths that in other ages were not known. He says, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. It is not every mystery we share now that was known in time past. The Holy Spirit has not stopped revealing. Just like he has not stopped creation. The Bible says in Revelations, there were times John saw some things. He says, seal it. Close this one. It is not for this time. One prayer. The mystery for this season. Oh God, let me see it. The secret of the Lord that makes for exploits in this season. Not just in time past. What the Spirit is saying. Saying. Which in time past was not known. But in these last days that he revealed to us by his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery for the season, oh God. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's pay attention. We'll rise up and pray just to exhort our hearts. When Jesus began to teach about the Holy Spirit, among the many things, please settle down, among the many things he said, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come, not just things that are happening. That means you will own the future by having access, knowledge and light of the things that will be useful in the future. The Holy Spirit, he will show you not just that he would take things that are mine that is already spectacular but he says he will show you things to come he will show you things to come things to come let me tell you the things that god is the knowledge that he's bringing please listen these are not necessarily the things that will only benefit us now they are the keys and the patterns that will give us access to the future Praise the Lord. Father, we bless you and we pray that the entrance of your word will give light and will give understanding to the simple in the name of Jesus. I pray like never before that what I'm about to share and exhort us on that finally someone will get this thing and that in the name of Jesus Christ as you get it, you will rise like an edifice unhindered. You know your time has come, not just by the prophecy that comes. You know your time has come. The light comes to you. When light does not come, no matter who prophesies, your time has not come. You will only rise and shine, not because of prophecy. Prophecy informs you so you can receive your faith. You can release your faith to receive that which is meant for you. But it's going to take light hallelujah the law of honor this is one of the deepest spiritual mysteries it is one of the most powerful spiritual laws I know second only to the law of encounter no matter what laws you know in the spirit if you do not know this you will never rise the law of honor. Pay attention, we'll listen, and then we'll pray. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Make our lives easy by the wisdom that comes in knowing your ways. In the name of Jesus, take away struggles, take away hardship from our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Very, very powerful. I will continue to teach us again and again that this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. 
the bible says in matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven we don't reign just by goodwill don't reign just by good intention having a sincere desire is not enough to reign just being a kind and a nice person is not even enough to reign there are many kind and wonderful people who are victims of situations and circumstances it will take light everybody say light you see let me tell you this as god reveals these principles don't just write them on a jotter write them upon the tablet of your heart that if they ask you tomorrow what are the secrets of the kingdom you know you can bring them out i may not know this and this but by god's grace i know this one and i know this one they are irrefutable principles backed up by god's own integrity there is no man there is no policy there is no civilization that will change or corrupt the immutability of these truths it is true believe me when i tell you and god has granted me access by his grace to certain mysteries and principles of all of them i will continue to tell you second only to the law of encounter this is the greatest in terms of value the laws are all powerful and they have their place but they are not equally powerful hallelujah the law of honor the mystery behind very strange open doors the mystery behind the unstoppable lifting and the rising of people the mystery that can in one day end captivity this is the mother that gives birth to favor favor is at the mercy of this knowledge hallelujah two scriptures one first samuel chapter 2 please and verse 30 first samuel chapter 2 and 30 wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord said be it far from me for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me i will lightly esteem that means trivialize this is god speaking them that honor me i will honor but they that despise me i will lightly esteem The kingdom works based on seed time and harvest. That means that there is always a seed. Every result that we obtain in the kingdom can be likened to a harvest. Please understand what I'm teaching you. I want you to get this law. That it is true and right when you call every result that you obtain in the kingdom a harvest. Whether it is healing, whether it is deliverance whether it is prosperity whether it is fresh grace activation of the gifts of the spirit whatever dimension it can be called a harvest and that for every harvest there is a seed everybody say seed please say it again seed the bible tells us in genesis chapter 8 and verse 22 when Abraham read an offering that was well pleasing unto god the Lord came and made certain vows backed up by his own integrity and he says as far as the earth remains he says seed time and harvest then he lists all the others shall not cease that means for every harvest you desire you start your journey to actualizing that harvest by knowing what seed produces it are we together now not every seed produces everything there are seeds and harvests that are allocated for those seeds are we together now very very important 
for instance attention and listening is the seed for learning if you want to learn a harvest knowledge the seed that you sow is your attention my son pay attention not just listen pay attention so attention is a seed and that when you pay attention to anything the harvest that come is that you will learn about it are we together knowledge in itself a seed for change or transformation you are not transformed by desire you are not changed just by intention it will take not for any change and any transformation to happen there are seeds very very important time is the seed for destiny there is no destiny without time please listen when god wants to give you a destiny he gives you a seed of time the way you sow that time will determine the kind of destiny that you will have that a man's destiny is a multiplication of the seeds of the time are you seeing why time is important that whatever tries to fight your time is not really really fighting your time is fighting your destiny because your time is the seed for your destiny appearance for instance is not only the seed for acceptance it is the seed for perception appearance does not just talk about the clothes you wear alone appearance is the seed for acceptance it is also the seed for perception that means i am at liberty to perceive things about your life based on your appearance if i see a mecca with a white um lab coat and apron and a stethoscope i can perceive that based on that appearance i can't call him a carpenter that is not the appearance of a carpenter are we together now that means that if i can change your perception by changing my appearance it's very very powerful i'm showing you seeds and the harvest that come words words are the seeds that carve intentions and thoughts words you use words to paint an intention from you to someone that means if i want to transfer what is in my heart to you the seed i will sow is words if i don't speak right i can create a harvest in you that was not what i intended i'm showing you how these things play are we together now battle is the seed for territory every time you want the harvest of a territory the seed you sow is battle there is no access to a territory without battle are we together friendship is the seed for relationship that he who wants friends must first show himself you must sow that seed of friendship this is very 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 powerful prayer and fasting are the seeds for both personal and corporate revival it's, it's all through scripture that every time you really want to see revival no matter what else you add to the table if there is no prayer and fasting you just added fertilizers without a seed the seed for revival both personal and corporate is prayer and fasting honor is the seed for access please write it down honor don't assume you have heard what i've said don't assume i've taught it so many times just listen very carefully honor is the seed for access that means dishonor is also a seed and there is a harvest that dishonor brings dishonor is the key to barriers 
the harvest that this honor brings is a barrier on your way this is powerful because many of the breakthroughs we seek in life will come at the instance of the access that we have and i'm teaching you that in the realm of the spirit that every time there is a limitation standing before you then there is a dimension of this law that you must engage otherwise you will remain there if you're with me say amen all failures can be traced to dishonor all without exception all failures in your life and my life can be traced to dishonor a threefold dimension of dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to spiritual principles all failure can be directly traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles are we together what then is honor please write this down generally honor talks of esteem esteeming a person or a thing but let me give you a definition that i've used and i found very valuable honor is the discerning please write the discerning true honor starts from discernment the celebration and the rewarding of excellence of usefulness of value honor is the discerning the celebration the rewarding of excellence from the word excel of usefulness and of value that means that you have please come you have the fortitude to honor first to the degree to which you can discern it's a spiritual perception that you must have the ability to discern value the ability to discern excellence the word excellence means the fortitude to surpass standards are we together now the ability to discern the use of a person or a thing either to your life or a system is called honor please listen very carefully that means dishonor on the other hand means trivializing importance dishonor means trivializing value trivializing usefulness trivializing a system a principle a person please write this i'm so glad that we're learning this even as we prepare for the business session tomorrow i believe it's going to be a very powerful time please pay attention listen dishonor means to take things or people for granted dishonor means to lightly esteem in second timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 the bible tells us there are certain vessels that are unto dishonor that are unto dishonor they are vessels but they are unto or for dishonor that means a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor is someone learning something here it is the key to all kinds of access the moment a door closes the key that opens it will be honor to god or honor to men or honor to principles or a combination of all of them are you getting what i'm saying now this is very very powerful and i'm teaching this because many people in our generation do not know that the reason why a person can mark time at a realm spiritually in ministry in business in family and so on and so forth because of one word dishonor dishonor is such a serious thing to god and honor is such a serious thing that the entire old testament was a system of creating honor listen very carefully believers 
I preached a message years ago called Commanding Results. And that was the first time I began to talk about honor. And I have watched this Lord change people's lives. I've watched it change my own life. And I want you to hold on to this Lord tonight like a ladder. And let me see the devil that will stop you from rising. Honor. Very, very powerful. The Bible lets us know that honor is required for success. Honor is required for any and every level of lifting. Whether spiritual, listen please, whether it is intellectual and all of that. When a student sits down in class to listen to a teacher, that attention is honor. The student sits down, he starts by discerning that this man standing before me, even if a student is at a higher level, are we together now? That this man standing before me has paid the price to accumulate the knowledge needed to lift me beyond my position. And so the student further demonstrates his honor by placing value on what the lecturer is saying. Now, being out, many information may escape his mind. He will write them down and follow it through. That is honor. Are we together now? This is very, very powerful because many believers do not know honor. They do not understand honor. Violate spiritual systems here and there and we continue to become victims although well-meaning. Nebuchadnezzar dishonored God and God taught him a lesson. That his sovereign power cannot be shared with any man. He turned him to a beast and for seven years his life was miserable. Are we together now? It's very, very important. There are all kinds of things happening in the body of Christ. And I can tell you the reason why many ministries, many businesses, many destinies, many individuals, some of our well-meaning parents never had the opportunity to rise one word dishonor this law also states that anything you dishonor will diminish in your life anything god man knowledge money anything you dishonor will begin to fade and erode out of your life and anything you consistently honor will begin to magnify in your life it's true we have dishonored men and women of God around the world members have dishonored their pastors and their leaders Husbands have dishonored their wives. Wives dishonored their husbands. Please listen. Students have dishonored lecturers. Lecturers dishonored students. We have dishonored men. We have dishonored God. We have dishonored laws. The laws that make for success. Isn't it amazing the way people believe that they will make impact and have no regard for laws? They just hope and think that their lives will magically evolve into the will of God. Either because they have good intentions or they think that they are not evil. No. Everything is built by laws. If it must last, it is built by laws. A spiritual life is built by laws. Prosperity is built by laws. Impact and influence is built by laws. Evil is built by laws. Grace of God. The lavish disposition of the grace of God upon a man's life is built by laws. Sustainability of anything is done by laws. And if you do not know the laws that are allocated for having access to the hearts of men, the hearts of kings, especially in this season, then you may not rise to certain levels. Hallelujah. Dishonor is not only bad, dishonor is sin. You have to understand this. 
we're not just talking about a concept that is positive or negative dishonor is sin that has real consequences we live in a world where the success and the sacrifices of many can be trivialized within a heartbeat we don't have regard for the sacrifice spiritually and otherwise of people i will tell you why people never rise because we have not trained ourselves to discern difference to know that there is a difference between a failure and a success they are not the same it's not an insult it's not being sarcastic there is a difference between being anointed and not being anointed there is a difference between being graced and not being graced it's a difference between being knowledgeable and ignorant there is a difference between being old and young there is a difference between being responsible and irresponsible there is a difference between being spiritual and unspiritual do you know this if you cannot discern it then you will not know who and what is deserving of honor are we together now this mic is doing something first to my life and then to all of us are we together now my honor to this mic will be to keep the systems that will keep it amplified are we together now if i off this mic i cannot pretend to not feel the effect it will do something to me i may shout but my voice will pay for it so honor is the ability to know the difference between using a mic and not using a mic you must know the effect on your life there is a difference between living in the favor of god and living outside the favor of god you cannot say it no there is a difference between obtaining help from god and running your life by your strength and by yourself those who have known have pieced together the principles and regardless of what men say let me tell you my brothers and my sisters learn this that i teach you tonight and watch the self-imposed prophecies of people fall to the ground even without saying any prayer on it the immutability of god's counsel backed up by his own name there is no failure for a man who understands this law if you ever see failure in a vision it remains there in the vision the laws of god will manipulate his life till he succeeds honor one powerful law this is why many men of god never rise this is why many ministries never rise it's not that they don't have revelation they have many other things but there's no honor there are many things that will never rise they have not trained themselves to know the difference between a good working family and a family that is not working there are many people who will never be rich and wealthy because they have not discerned that there is a difference between a wealthy man and someone who is not wealthy many times we call the sacrifices of people luck or chance listen carefully when you see a young man anointed vibrant with fire and grace just say this guy was lucky maybe he just met a man of god and hands were laid on him that perception that inability to see that people do not just rise by default you don't see a house built and you say wow the wings just put blocks together and added what what creativity from the wind no there are things that are too intentional to be a mistake are you getting what i'm saying now there are certain results that have gone past the realm of guesswork there is a level of excellence there is a level of intention there are certain levels of anointing that a man can possess that is no longer guesswork you have to know what you are doing to get there it's impossible to get there hoping no it's like olympic or boxing fight somebody on the street and have an advantage but you can't go to the ring and fight someone and convince yourself that all things are possible there is an art to winning in the ring there may not be art to winning on the street but if you enter a boxing ring the person will tell you there are courses you take 
you understand anatomy the entire anatomy and physiology to know the parts you can punch and the effects that they create so he looks at you and you are already dead because he has seen all the loopholes and yet you just think he's looking with the eyes of a layman until he gives you punch then you will know that there is a difference between a boxer and a man it's amazing how many people look at successful people and sometimes they are even afraid for them ah, i hope you will not fail are you joking do you think success is that cheap success is built on absolutely intentional laws no great ministry is built just by intention please listen listen there is no great family as any good father mother and well-behaved children there is a level of family result that it cannot be locked cannot be locked when you come from a family that is tied into witchcraft and all of that there is a level of result that if you attain there are things that you have dealt with it's impossible to cross a certain threshold being under captivity everybody say oh no my assignment is to train your eyes to train your spirit to know that everything is not the same god is not the same as a shrine so when you say choose between god and one shrine in your village you don't have honor it's this one that perception when they kept god the ark and they kept dagon god's jealousy made the difference clear immediately it's not the issue of god there's no point to prove you are still god there's a point to prove he made sure dagon fell head on there are times in life that there are points to prove there are really points to prove is god helping us right now there are people here who have traveled from so far you have come because of one word honor you call it hunger but it is still honor are we together now reverend daniels and his dear wife let's let's bless god for them i mean i was i was in a boy they are based in enugu great minister work there i usually go to minister there it was them together with some pastors that put the meeting in a boy it was such a great phenomenal meeting and as soon as they were done i returned back and i was surprised to see these people still here it's called honor the discernment that there can be more you don't just act like that you think first do i need this level is it really important with this level or without it is there an effect in my life there are things you must think about if i'm poor or rich will it create an effect if your mind says you don't have honor because you to think that being wealthy and being poor any one of them can go is a sign that you are oppressed because the bible listen i'm not just talking about money i'm opening your eyes to something so if a young man remains at a level spiritually and you don't contend for higher levels of grace and the anointing it is because you have not honored the relevance of that dimension of grace you have not perceived that to be greatly anointed is higher than being anointed how god anointed jesus not just that he was anointed how god anointed jesus of nazareth so contend for the anointing with an open heart is because you have discerned that the anointing is like money it is the amount you have that will determine what you can buy the grace of god upon your life will only solve the problems that are below it any challenge that is higher than that grace you will not be able to purchase those spiritual realities so the tension for spiritual growth is proof that you are honoring the anointing of the spirit at that level many of you are participating in this this prayer and fast now regardless of the inconvenience many people have been under all kinds of inconvenience yet you endure the name of what you are doing is honor because you know that after seven days you are going to carry something 
something that no devil will be able to stop and you weighed your convenience you weighed several things and you said the sacrifice was worth it oh no it is honor that will make someone in need of a politician's help sit at his reception from 6 a.m in the morning and the man says i'm sorry i can't see you now can you be patient i'm i'm traveling but i'll come back by nine he says no problem and he sits down there for more than 13 hours and the man returns ah your excellency sir you are back because he knows that no matter how long i wait it's cheaper than suffering no matter how long i wait in that place one favor from that man can change my life a that foolish man say what is this what is there and you will go back to recycle your pain once again we we'll apologize for the inconvenience there's, there's wind blowing especially for those outside everybody say honor it is honor that teaches you that an elderly person is not the same as a young person that no matter how knowledgeable you are there is an advantage that time and age can provide to men are we together now The Shunammite woman saw Elisha passing every time. Elisha was not the only one who was passing every time. But the Bible says she perceived that guy. <clears throat> there is this. The fact that he was always passing meant that he was always under. He was hearing God all the time and going to execute instructions. And she perceived that this man's coming into my house can provide an advantage. And she said, I will not just tell him come to my house. I will prepare for his coming. So she, she kept watching him. Every time she would see him carrying a book. She didn't ask him, what do you like, books? Do you? She kept perceiving. And she went and prepared. She simulated an environment that would suit him and say, sir, you are welcome. And the man said, all right, madam, you have brought me. Let me tell you what you brought. What is your problem? She said, I don't have any, I live among my people. Is to tell you the level to which she has shelved that case of having a child. But Elisha said, no, you don't bring this kind of grace and your life remains the same. It's a new song to the sacrifice that brought this anointing. I paid the price and I went to Gilgal. I went down to John, I got a double portion. I can't enter your house. You honored me and then I walk out. And then your gate man too enters and walks out. And then anybody, and what then is the difference of the sacrifice? I'm not one of the sons of the prophet. I follow through to the end. Madam, the, the, the grace is crying for him. Give it an assignment. He said, no, 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 no. I'm an influential woman. I love my people. And then he said, I will create one by myself. And the servant said she doesn't have a child. He said, that's it. Notice she didn't ask for a child. She didn't pray for a child. She only honored. And the honor found what problem it will solve by itself. There is a realm of honor that you get to that you will have to open your mouth and pray some things. Everybody kept lamenting about the hunger in Samaria. Ah, Samaria were in trouble. I said, you too, you felt the hunger a bit? They said, yes. And out of all the people who were crying, the women and all the people, they noticed that two people were unaffected by that famine. The king and a strange man. He was not crying for bread as if he was not a citizen there. And then when they a whole nation is suffering and the solution is in the pocket of one man yet he didn't pray he just kept moving his thing around the city this honor kept closing the door until someone provoked that grace provoked that anointing and he said all right by this time tomorrow he didn't say let me go and pray and then i'll see the cloud he said by time he didn't say oh lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I stand as your servant and I call on heaven. He said, me, I make it happen. By this time tomorrow, let the gates of a nation be open. Your Bible. Honor is powerful. When you honor God, 
there are things God will do to you that all men will know is only God that can do this. God will do some things and sign his signature like Julius Berger will build and write B so that you will know the difference. So you don't confuse it and think someone else built it. God will build your life and write his name on it. So that when anyone looks at you and says, last year, were you not like this? Say, yes, it's not, I didn't build myself. I was built by an architect. You honor men. You have access to their heart. And with their heart will come their influence, their credibility, their resources. You put pressure on everything they are. And you will leverage on their credibility to rise. Let me tell you, your, your journey will be hard in life if you do not know how to honor men. All men are not the same. Are we together? Someone I know won an election. And as soon as the person won an election, she that works with him, just called me and said, started jumping. Why was the person jumping? He didn't participate. He didn't do anything yet. Already, they've not sworn in that one, but he started jumping. Ah, God has buttered our bread. Because when you honor a man and have access to his heart, you don't have to rise. He just has to rise and you will follow him. Honor it will open doors for you that will surprise you. It will accelerate your life beyond your imagination. Please sit down. Sit down. Let me show you for when I was studying this, it struck my heart and the Lord put it in my heart to show you. I'm going to show you four cases in the Bible where honor or dishonor played a role. And let's see what happened. Number one, just four, there are so many, and then I'll give you the and we'll pray. Someone's life is changing. I know this. I know this. Listen, this is one of the laws that you will see the result immediately. There are some laws that you may see the result later. This one, you can start seeing it from this night. Genesis chapter 9 from verse 20. This was the issue of Noah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Noah and his sons. It says, and Noah began to be a husbandman. And he planted a vineyard. We are reading to 27. And he drank of the wine and was drunken and covered within his tent. Now, there are all kinds of theological debates about this as to what this really meant. It's, it's not, it's not the... the, 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 the the revelation of the context is not what I'm, I'm really interested. I want to show you something. And next verse. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told it to his two without. 23. And Shem and Jack took a garment. Listen carefully. And laid it on both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward. And they saw not their father's nakedness. 24. And Noah awoke from wine and knew he was sleeping. He was not told, though. He woke up and knew that his younger son, he knew what had done to him, 25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren, 26. And he said, remember he didn't know who did what and he didn't say all of you come who saw the nakedness and who covered it that means noah was not annoying a man that built an ark that all the animals entered is that an ordinary man notice how the bible does not even talk about vineyard and the wine again it just focuses on the cause and the blessing he wakes up from his sleep and just knows that many things happened while he was sleeping. The same way you can look at your father and say, my useless father, if only this man went to school. And while you are saying it, he's sleeping. But there are laws. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. 
these are laws and ordinance. None of the sons, he didn't call an assembly and say, okay, tell me what happened. And he said, daddy, this is what happened. No, he got up and then he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Enan shall be his servant. 27. God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. End of discussion. What was the offense? Dishonor. Someone dishonored Noah. Another person honored Noah. Two of them instantly got rewards for it. I told you honor is a seed. It's a seed that grows fast like a weed. Number two. Hmm. Now this one you have a lot to learn here. Genesis chapter 16. Ah, the Lord opened my eyes to see something there. Genesis chapter 16. This is the story of Sarah and Hagar. Please look up and learn something powerful here. And now Sarah, Abraham's wife, beg him no child. Notice that all these stories start with something that looks like a problem. And then in the midst of it, the problem is forgotten. And then the context of honor or dishonor is the discussion. And he said, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar, verse 2. And Sarah said unto Abraham, behold now, the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my handmaid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. Now you have to study in Jewish practice to know. This was not anything unusual at those times. Your brother's wife could bear children for you and maids and all of that. So, and Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Verse 3. Notice. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt 10 years and so on and so forth, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. Verse 4. And he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Notice the story. This was a girl that was brought. And then he said, Todd, since I'm not able to give you a child, let me not be too selfish. That is because of me. Based on that tradition now. Here is my housemate. Have a child with her. And at the moment the lady noticed she was pregnant, something happened. Next verse. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon me. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Watch this. The Lord judged between me and thee. Next verse. But Abraham said to Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do with her as it pleased thee. And Sarai dealt hardly with her. She fled from her face. Now, get ready to learn the lesson. And the angel of the Lord, so Sarah drove Hagar now. Are you getting the story now? And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of shore. Eight. And he said, listen, Hagar, Sarah's maid, when comest thou, what did the angel call her? Sarah's maid. We know the protocol, even from the spirit. Just because you have a child, I will call you by that ordinance. You are still Sarah's maid. Your lifting was connected to Sarah. And even though you have left, the realm of the spirit still recognizes that this lifting was tied to Sarah. It says, Whence camest thou? And whither will thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. Look at this. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, what did he say? Return to thy mistress and submit yourself under her hands. In other words, madam, there's no hope for your situation. Honor has closed the door, not even me. My recommendation is go back. Let that submission be in place. Otherwise, I'm meeting you here, I will see go like that. This is Bible. Return to your mistress. And submit yourself to her last verse <laughs> and the angel of the Lord said unto her I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude go back every other thing is still tied to that go back and submit yourself look at this kind of story a woman is running away and an angel meets her 
and she's complaining that this wicked and the bible testifies that sarah truly dealt with her hardly he would have said go and tell sarah you saw me i the angel of the lord has said she should mind herself and he says go back to your mistress i'm showing you very deep spiritual you will now know why elisha received the mantle number three numbers chapter 12 follow me believers and let's grow in the spirit numbers chapter 12 this involved relatives now relatives relatives because this honor happens a lot with family and so relatives and miriam and aaron spoke against moses because of the utopian the word utopian means black woman whom he had married for he had married an utopian woman verse 2 and they said had the lord now they now digress and started saying does god speak to moses alone had the lord indeed spoken only by moses and had he not also spoken by us i hope you know miriam is a prophetess that means she was hearing god and aaron was a priest too so they are saying why i mean moses what are you saying i am a prophetess and this guy is a priest us too here and there we are hearing god and the lord had it and the lord had it what conversation two of them were talking you know and while they were talking god said let me see what i'm saying and the lord had it next verse now the man moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth verse 4 and the lord spake suddenly to moses hey god comes to hear something and goes back and say moses come something is about to happen to two of your relatives now let me inform you so that you don't beg me i'm the one who is going to do it now god knew what moses can do and he knows if moses talks he will interrupt the process he's collecting permission from moses to deal with certain people here and moses and unto aaron and miriam come out ye three to the tabernacle of the congregation and three of them came out all of them hear god remember so now verify that they all hear god because god called three of them and all of them had next verse and the lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tent and called aaron and miriam and they both came forward and and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you i the lord will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream seven hi my servant moses is not so who is faithful in all my house one day i will explain to you what god just said next verse with him i will speak mouth to mouth that look look you people receive visions and dreams but i've left that realm with moses i don't just i come to him my level of relationship with moses is that i come to him and speak from my mouth to his mouth and not in dark speeches and in similitudes of the lord shall he behold wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against not me my servant moses next verse and the anger of the lord was kindled against them and he left next verse and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold miriam became leprous white as snow and aaron looked upon miriam and behold she was leprous 11 next verse and aaron said unto moses alas my lord the adjustment happened immediately i don't know what i called you before but after seeing this class alas my lord i beseech thee was this not what haman did to esther when it was imminent that he was going to die i beseech thee lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned i told you dishonor is a sin next verse let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed and when he cometh out of his mother's womb 13 and moses you see why god came to moses before and moses now said god oh yeah come come i've, I've looked at this 
And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Look at a man talking with God, oh. Not, oh God, heal her now. God is okay, don't. 14. And the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days he says let her be shut out from the camp seven days and after that let her be sieved in again last verse miriam was shut out of the camp seven days and the people journeyed not until miriam was brought in again you can continue she later recovered but i'm saying just because a man that god loved the jealousy of god came down dishonor the same way you can honor a man in secret he's not even aware and god will also hear it and see it and god will arise and deposit something upon your life are you getting blessed very powerful the last scripture and then i'll show you certain keys second kings chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 from verse 3 Elisha was in in the heat of the anointing the portion anointing that just rested on him now this one now had to do with children sometimes ba is really really strange this is children and he went forth from thence on to Bethel and as he was going by the way there came forth what little children should they not be spared little children there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him saying go up thou bald head go up thou bald head 24 and he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the lord and there came forth two shares out of the wood and tear 40 and two of them he caused them in whose name is it not the same god that said the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger but rich in love small children what are not are no problem these are little children they are learning and yet he turns to them and causes them in the name of the lord and bears come out and injure and children think how many things honor can do in your life and how many things dishonor can do in your life dishonor to the law of giving alone has kept a lot of people poor dishonor to productivity has kept a lot of people seeing visions of wealth that will never actualize let me tell you this please listen and this is a message to the body of christ there is a growing trend of many young vibrant ministers especially apostles and prophets all around the nation of africa and the world who because of civilization and the context of our understanding today are consistently violating this calling the name of every man of god tearing men of god down in the name of i know this i know that destroying all kinds of people let me tell you the laws of god are irrefutable it's only a matter of time you will see grave consequences the people i pity are the children of these people not even them they are endangering their children not knowing and some of you here have been victims of it you stand whether on social media whether whatever tear down anybody insult anybody you see a rich man getting private jet you write nonsense online stupid criminals we are coming for you you see a man anointed and the next thing you are saying something really nasty how are we sure is the power of god and while that is happening god is hearing he's bringing down because the covenant of that man with god has a voice it's an altar that is maintained by sacrifice please listen very carefully i'm teaching you powerful spiritual principles many shop owners have insulted everybody succeeding as though is the reason why they are not succeeding and their shop started down and notice that the more they pray the more it goes down 
because that trouble didn't come from Satan so there is nothing to cast there I've seen men of God who went down and their voices almost never heard again because of the level the pungency of their criticizing all kinds of people today everybody right now is an analyst of the body of Christ analyzing what is happening analyzing who is anointed analyzing this and that is dangerous listen to me listen to me these are spiritual principles nobody rose up just like that it's the same way they criticize William Branham just because things went bad at the end of his and all of that people would tear down people had written all kinds of books and his grace is not speaking around the body of Christ because of that pungency listen very carefully those who may not have crowd will tear down anybody and say it's the issue of crowd what is their membership sometimes those things come from a standpoint of sarcasm and God, who is the one who brings men is hearing and then we secretly go back and we say God must we remain like this and God said me I'm the force behind this lack of growth how many unemployed people will see someone and say what are you doing now he said, I'm working in one school. He said, ah, you. It's better to have been making a kunua zobo to sell. You mean you are right there. You see that? You think it's a joke. But God is hearing. That you have never submitted your CV and gotten a job. And someone without submitting his CV, he got a job. I agree that he's getting 4,000. But because we have learned dishonor. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes our lives we continue to web our lives with all kinds of strings of dishonor there are people who have refused to rise because of this one reason dishonor honor is the key to access and they never access grace they never access wisdom there are many wealthy people in this city for instance and there are not many people who have gone to sit down and say i came to visit you sir is there one or two things you can teach me say no everybody's a thief everybody's an arm robber and they continue to re-impart upon themselves that level forever please listen to what i'm teaching you those who have understood this have risen in ways that you cannot imagine happy are you when god carries the heart of a man and gives to you that god connects you huh to the heart of a man through honor is somebody learning something so when you master honor when you learn honor you will see doors opening by themselves there are men of god who were invited to certain places once and will never go back there again because they did not understand the principle of honor to these systems when they and took advantage of anything and just tore everybody down there are some of you who come to the houses of great people and you destroy your opportunity for connection forever you come to a house and you cross your leg you put it on a chair and you just balance and the next thing uh what would you like eh, i don't take too much pepper what exactly do you have let me know what you have and the person who is for is just an example the person who is talking is poor and doesn't have any open door are you seeing that now let me tell you this if doors refuse to open i am telling you this it is dishonor that has kept it closed I never see any man or woman that is worthy of honor and will not communicate the honor that is due because I know the consequence. There are many people in this city who would have been long healed by now. There are many people who would have been long delivered by now. But this honor is the gate and the padlock the devil used to keep them in their situations forever. You can pray, you can fast, but there are certain realms you cannot enter except through honor. Honor is the seed for access. The Lord by honor and by heat. 
has taken me to places today that I know there's no reason and there is no other way I would have gotten there. What honor can do is powerful. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. You will step into prepared blessings when you understand honor. Honor to God, honor to men, honor to principles. I'm not teaching you human worship. Now, let me tell you this, and let me balance it very quickly. It is foolish and stupid of any great man, especially a man of God, when people show you honor and you take them for granted. Any wise person who knows God and has value for life will not take you for granted when you honor them. What I'm saying now, yes. There are things people do to me that I'm, if I have my way, I will beg them and say, please, don't, don't even, please. I'm okay. I know you honor me from your heart. The Lord bless you. Let's leave it like that. But that you dishonor men and you want to rise every realm you dishonor you've exempted yourself from entering that realm whether it's financially whether it's spiritually or otherwise see listen this is why you find out that you continue to dishonor people and secretly try to enter that realm and there is a resistance that no prayer will take away Apostle, you don't know what my father did to me. My, my father is not a nice man. You don't know what my mother did. These people left me. I would have died. I would have gone into prostitution. I paid school fees by myself. Now they think that I should come and bless them. Listen, let me tell you. They may not have gotten it well, but it is no license for dishonor. They may do everything wrong, but one day they will do something right. Pay for that one day because the blessing you will get the day they get it right will follow you transgenerationally hallelujah i pay attention there are ministries that honor me so much and honor me truly and i have seen the effect when i teach and share god's word in those places i see the result i know that the honor is sincere and you will see that those people receive those people rise those people grow that's why in many churches it is us that come and receive most members hardly you know why because they know the pastor they know the elder maybe he's even their biological father so when he's preaching and he says everybody stretch forth your hands you just laugh and say daddy you will soon be hungry now he's, i'm the one who prepares your meal and then god will hear you how many wives dishonor their husbands because they are already married? Sam Cop. They think that just because they are married, they dishonor. When they get married, they do all kinds of things nice. Two weeks after the marriage, the man is just one, one item I am joined with forever. And God is hearing. Because the possibilities and the grace of that man will speak to every other person except the wife. The same thing with the woman men will get married to women and think they are just rags the bible says submit go and do this whereas the man is not prayerful and that lady came as the reason even god told you that she's the reason why you are succeeding then the day you annoy her everything fails you go to god and god says like he told hagar go back you may not submit to the woman but you must submit to that possibility if you want a revival of that dimension Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is true. I am a product of what honor can do. I am a product of what honor can do. I am a product of what honor can do. Listen, you will not be able to dig every well by yourself, no matter how hardworking you are. Your lifetime is too small to dig those wells. There are wells that have already been dug. Those wells like Jacob's well will last generations use honor as a fetcher to draw and draw again enough to feed you and feed a generation jesus went to a city and could not do mighty miracles what simple is this not the carpenter's son but there was a blind man when he was passing jericho for the last time he says thou son of david have mercy he didn't say can you have mercy mm -mm. i know you have it have mercy oh you won't pass me have mercy 
And Jesus said, what should I do for you? That I may regain my sight and his eyes opened. I continue to search for dishonor around my life so that I will correct it very fast. I tell you, any door that is closed, there's something, there is an element of dishonor that may be there. If you are sincere, why, oh God, am I surrounded by anointed people and I can never carry real grace? Dishonor. Why am I surrounded by wealthy people and I continue to remain poor? Dishonor. Why am I surrounded by wise people and I continue to be foolish again and again? Why am I surrounded by people who are on fire and there's no revelation? They give you any scripture, you can't say anything about it. Notice the gate men of men of God. Notice the chefs. They don't have any revelation. As if all they came to do was to cook. Can't you see the visitors that you are cooking for? Their lives are being changed. And you continue to serve the food and receive tips. Whereas one day you say, sir, this chef I'm, 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 is, is passion, but I need results. I've served your food now, but I need something. Are you getting what I'm saying? When I meet extremely great people, I don't waste that time. I don't sit down and say, and sometimes, ah, my apostle, great man and great this. I just find a forum where we're alone and find a seat and say, sir, I decide. I don't just say, pray for me. That's a stupid approach. That's not honor. You will never receive anything that way. You must discern. I know the difference between you and me. The results show it. I am not there yet. Simple and straightforward. And I beckon on whatever grace that brought this result. And with a passionate heart, they will release everybody that has something knows it and they know when it leaves them to you hallelujah praise the lord this ministry is enjoying the blessings of the body of christ because of the honor of the body of christ i say this with all blessings we don't have a youtube channel as it were i don't know if the media has that but there is almost no message you will type and you will not find someone took it as a responsibility without payment it is because a sinner was sown and so it was sown to the body and the harvest also came from the body are you getting what i'm telling you now when it was time to, for the sick here this morning many of you came and you watched a benihim video first it doesn't mean i'm not anointed to pray for you but I know from whence, you see, let me tell you, a river that forgets its source, truly speaking, you will dry up. It's a matter of time. You will dry up to nonsense and, and not know where you came from again. Our proud generation continues to have results for a while and then it will disappear. Because the moment you have results, most times people don't know the difference again somebody trained you in business now you have become a millionaire and you come to meet the person in the shop bros are you there you are an apprentice there and you come with your g-wagon and smile you have a g-wagon i have a g-wagon don't harass me i just came back from italy that's a foolish man one day you will not know the explanation why things will go down and you will go to god and he will give you the recommendation of hagar go back you are a great man but in the realm of the spirit you are still sarah's maid the law of honor the law of honor i shared with you my story that i wanted to go to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter as a man of god not to go for a conference not to say just to let you know that there is a young man all the way from nigeria he's by the name joshua selman he's my humble self is that humility i was going to scrub the toilet not to go as a man of god oh i would have gladly scrubbed that toilet 
Lord, whatever grace will make a man to raise hundred wheelchairs in one meeting, laugh at it. Whatever grace, this is the law of honor. Many people don't know how to receive miracles. When I talk like this, you would think it's arrogance. If I get up in the morning with my eyes blind by 6 p.m., that eyes must have been open the desperation to receive is not there many people are too ashamed to really receive the woman with the issue of blood said get out of my way i'm the one who knows what i'm suffering shift let me touch the hem of his garment and the people were trying to embarrass her said, no please, let me touch the hem of his garment and she was healed don't violate this ordinance let me give you a few keys our time is gone we should pray i pray in the name of jesus that you will value this that i shared with you and you will watch how easy life can be keys to honor one wisdom there cannot be honor until there is wisdom you need a deposit of wisdom to manifest honor wisdom to know the protocol of greatness Vashti was a foolish woman for one reason she lacked wisdom it was her wisdom that culminated to dishonor that made her pay the price there is no record of Vashti going back to beg the king she forgot she was only queen because she married the king are we together no wisdom the king called on her to his chamber to come and flaunt the glory and she said no i have my own agenda and the elders came and said king do something about this woman if not other women will start doing the same thing and the king said vashti you are gone when sarah came study the book of sarah and see honor personified what most people see there is favor you are seeing the child look at the mother look at how the pregnancy started until the child called favor was born she meets the king on hearing that a wicked man called her man wants to destroy the people of god and the king said esther what do you want to half of my kingdom she said nothing oh king would you grant me the honor of hosting you to a banquet he said that is it is there any problem she said no yet there was an emergency lives were about to be she knew that in dealing with greatness timing matters not every time is the time you can just see your destiny help and say anything for the boys immediately he planned to give you a job because of that he will vow that your children's children will not get a job timing there are many people as soon as you see a great man the next thing you come sir uh, anything for us sir whereas the man was about to ask you young man what do you do we are looking for a secretary is it all right if we send you to our dubai office and you foolishly come with mediocrity and say sir you are looking as if i'm not so bad, but will you go like that you see stop that every time you see a great man your first element is not to beg listen to me and learn many young people continue to mess up you want one thousand they will give you one thousand yet you have lost access to their hearts are we together esther now tells the king let me host you he said all right let me come and try and esther prepared a permit me to use the word a wicked banquet when the king ate this she came again he said now i'm ready is there any request say no sir just grant me the privilege of doing this again and then another time she now said now i want it to be a feast of wine you know wine is a spirit in the bible she's about to make a request and she's making a request against the closest friend of the king what if the king says you want me to fight my friend i will kill you she knew the timing there was something that needed to happen for him because her man was his right hand man so when the king took the wine he was filled with that wine and he sat down and then she came what do you want esther 
and she said oh king there is a man who that wants to destroy me your one and only queen and my woman he said who is that he said that is the man that stands by your side wise king he left and went to a garden he didn't answer yet he left and went to the garden because the word of a king is a law and he said let me think first let me not talk foolishly will this decision be honorable many times silence is proof of wisdom you don't have to be under pressure to answer everything is God helping someone today you sweep it do it again by the second day do it again by the third day very soon somebody will call you and say why are you doing this you say well I, I plan to have this kind of thing I'm a responsible person I have learned honor I just feel I should do this every great man knows greatness when it, even if it is in infancy they will look and say mm -mm, you they won't make you a manager they'll say okay keep sweeping a wise man will not call you immediately he will test the sincerity of your honor you say continue doing it just to know you are not a thief that's all and then he says watch this person and for six months you will sweep with nobody saying thank you but on the seventh day of ah, you know how bible talks you will come to sweep and see a car with a key and a letter inside open me say ah, i won't do this so i'm not a thief and you open it and that's the prayer request of someone for 10 years there is a key to every territory it's called honor you are sandwiched between people who are greater than you and people who you are greater than if you keep receiving honor from those who are greater than everybody will reach your level and leave you 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 have to keep rising too while you bring others up Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yes. There is no program that is done in this ministry that I will not sow into it. This ministry is a blessed ministry. But even at that, I must look for something and sow into it. Principles. When your prayer life goes down, is dishonor. Because it's proof that you are trying to show God you are the Lord of your own life. And he's watching. You get up in the morning, you yawn your way through a life, you return back by the mercy of God and you will not understand that he kept you. You will continue on till the day Keket almost capsizes you and then you remember the scripture. It is vain to wake up early and sleep night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But it is God that gives men sleep and rest. You will return back and say, God, I don't know what entered me, but I'm back. Oh no. We are going to pray wisdom number two let me rush it i apologize for taking our time this night the second key to honor is forbearance you cannot practice honor if all you have is forgiveness forbearance is a deeper dimension forbearance means it will happen again so you wire it into your system of honor that this person I honor is a noise maker. I don't like noise, but I have to prepare my mind to hear noise all the time. It's called forbearance. Adaptation is proof of honor. The greater one will not be the one to be flexible and adjust to you. You are the one who will have to stretch yourself. Are we together? Forbearance. Many of you cannot forbear great people. Let me give you a very big secret. Great people are difficult people. The complexity around the systems that work in their life will not only need wisdom, it will need forbearance. There are many yeses you have to say without knowing what you are doing. Forbearance. I'm not a fool. I can't continue to do a mumu in this office. I'm fighting for my rights. And they say, open the gate for him. Please leave this place. After two months, you find out that you had one stream of income coming by the mercy of God. And an erratic dishonor of five minutes is costing your children's school fees. Forbearance. Everybody say forbearance. A lot of Pentecostals have lost graces in the Orthodox circle because they don't have the forbearance you go to an anglican church and there's a long hymn you check how many verse stanzas six and the man leading will tell you when we get to verse five we'll sing it again he's enjoying what he said 
and you are you are sad you are you are nauseated you are angry you are already offended you're off by everything the chance and all of that whereas there was a grace there for you to get to forbear to forbear to forbear is not to forgive to forbear is to wire yourself to update everything number three the third key to honor is to pray for those you seek to receive from you don't pray for a man you seek to receive from you will not get anything let me tell you many people don't pray for those who they seek to receive from pray just by praying for them alone job 42 and verse 10 you pray for those who have gotten the friends of job were not oppressed he was wealthier and greater than them but with respect to his predicament they had become greater than him and he had to submit to honor them by investing prayer job 42 and verse 10 he says the lord turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends not himself number four genuinely celebrate those you honor not eye service not ah bless god for papa Oyedepo. bless god for papa Iadeboe. and then you go to one godless discussion of three or four people he said don't mind all these fathers of faith i'm so disappointed I, I i hate them more it's just that if you say it now they will beat you so that's the real truth i really hate them but it's just that outside let me honor them no like noah they may be asleep but they are still seeing and they are still hearing and they will wake up and know who said what and who didn't say what sight happens whether you are asleep or awake paul was blind for three days yet he was seeing visions celebrate celebrate a ministry that is blessing you celebrate it a life that is blessing you celebrate that life genuinely celebrate them finally love the last key to genuine honor is love you cannot honor a man a principle a system and even the god that you do not love 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 i love the body of christ i love koinonia i love the workers i love the leaders from the depth of my heart and it has nothing to do with selfishness I wish we had time i wish we had time i wish we had time do you know the bible says listen carefully all that i've said about honor suggests to higher authorities but that's only one dimension of honor because you also have to honor people prophetically who are about to rise you don't just honor those who have risen they have plateaued and you have seen it but there are people who are about to rise you will need discernment 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 many of us will dishonor everybody lower than you and everybody who cannot give you anything sam what do you have to offer nothing I, please you are not worth my honor emeka you are a doctor i i need injection because i don't know where my leg is like i don't understand. i i honor you wonderful except for the fact that you have registered your exit from sam's life before he rises the moment he rises he rises with you he has noted you that you qualify for exit from his life so the secret therefore and the jackpot is to honor all men because god is the lifter of men my brothers and my sisters you can you see me or little children here they come and match my cloth and sometimes the protocol wants to stop them i say leave it to this debt they are matching they will buy the soap tomorrow they have the ability there are many of you who cannot play with children there are many who you 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 can dishonor and oppress anybody lower than you once anybody is higher than you you can lie down and roll on the ground but when there is anybody who doesn't have anything as of yet to give to you you destroy them you are making a big mistake the key to owning the future 
is to honor those who God is lifting for the future. And Jimmy will say it this way, find a man who is rising and in that life. Listen, let me tell you this, you know, there are many people who believe that just because they knew you and they were connected, it means they are stakeholders. No. Connection is not enough to be a stakeholder. It must translate from a connection to an event. Relationships that are investments are the relationships that are worth maintaining. An ordinary connection is not worth it. An investment of time, of resources. Imagine the people that knew you. They don't know what God is doing in your life now. They are looking at the you of five years. And there is nothing comely there. Except for the fact that it will be like the twinkling of an eye. One day they will be following on Facebook and say, ah, who is this? You? As though they ask God not to lift you. And then you suddenly rise. And you watch the way they casually and shamelessly call you. It is so, so, so and so. Call me back quickly. No. The person you want to call is not there again. This is a newer version. If your relationship was not an investment that could grow, then it didn't yield anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? The easiest way to prosper is through relationships. But relationship as an investment, not a connection. This is already a preview of tomorrow. Relationship as an investment, not a connection. This is what Reverend Dan and his wife are doing. These are general overseers. They left a boy and they left Enugu. Not only to come and receive. Let me tell you, it's not every time you need to receive. There are times that you have to invest whether you are comfortable or not. Politicians know this. Business people know this. Someone will leave Kenya and leave South Africa to come for the birthday party of a two-year-old baby. What has the baby done for him? What of the hand that holds the baby? That's where his paycheck comes from. Are we together? So the woman with the alabaster box discerned that this man will one day be the king of kings. And I have a terrible life. What can I do to edge my relationship in this man's life? And she took a, 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 a what they call it, a box, spike nut, a year's wages. And she did something she knew it would not be easy for any other person to do. She smashed it at his feet and used her hair and jesus said anytime you are talking about me and the gospel you must make reference to this woman when we get to heaven you will know that you will not just see any woman you will see the difference it's in the bible i mean it's in the bible there are rankings based on relationship it's in your bible the elders in heaven there the 24 living creatures, what did they do to God? That keeps them in the throne. The angels are not in the throne. They only and get messages and leave. But there are creatures that stay. It's only God that is going to tell you. When you see greatness, don't ignore it. Turn your relationships from connections to investments. You send a text, may God bless you daddy. May God bless you mommy. They don't reply, continue. An investment you do returns immediately, but it's working. The day they are looking for good people to bless, your sacrifice is too much you to be ignored. Hallelujah. There are several men of God that is difficult for me to tell them no. Even when my schedules are already booked, if they do come, I will try to tell them find a way even if it's a weekday let's squeeze even if it's one day no problem let me honor them because of what they have done there are people when i see their missed calls provided i have the time even if it's two minutes i can even squeeze and just send a text and say i'm sorry i may not be able to talk to you now but i'll reply you all the debt it forces you to pay back We are gathered here for seven days and if God does not change our lives you can activate this system try it this night write down the five or ten people in your life 
that are most deserving of your honor and write down the top 10 people in who make you a big deal anybody that makes you a big deal don't trivialize them because the whole world does not have that level of honor if you make me a big deal i will invest into your life make god a big deal and see what he does to you is somebody learning now yes when you find anybody in your life that thinks you are somewhat celebrating and makes you a big deal be wise enough to separate them and let me tell you this never give people access beyond their last level of honor don't make your life that cheap as you give people access watch for the honor that follows if the closer they get the more the honor goes down stop there stop from the last place of honor and remain there god is the one who prescribed this what you do in my parlor may qualify you for my kitchen may qualify you for my bedroom then may qualify you to my safe you don't come from the gates there are visitors that you look through the pigeonhole and say why are you here say i just need help you squeeze one thousand and say please go it's not it's not insult it's the level of relationship there are others you can open the gate and say okay what is it you say can't we get a shade mm, you have not that shade you see has a, a dimension there are others you say you are welcome there are others you say you are welcome as far as you want don't believe that everybody has the same access listen to me anybody that dishonors you don't fight them but peg them at the last place of honor and keep it there until there is a reason to transit and some of them sadly sadly may be people in ministry people in whatever kind of thing refuse that is someone learning this otherwise you would destroy yourself somebody will come and meet you and say give me a business advice you gave him a business advice yesterday and the person trivialized it made nonsense out of it when he was teaching it he didn't give credit and honor to you and felt it was not an issue then he says give me another one he said no no let your honor qualify you for the next access when you find people who the closer they come to you the higher the honor treasure them they are an endangered species the world does not have many of such people these are kingdom secrets my brothers and my sisters you should share the grace tonight knowing that a real key was given to you go to your office tomorrow and you see people who are undeserving of your honor and you will see the mistakes you have been making you told people secrets about your life secrets about your family secrets about your destiny secrets about certain things and they have no fortitude for honor everybody say honor this is a powerful law powerful law to the degree to which you honor god he will bring you into his inner chambers he will say come let me show you the things you will not hear in a congregation come my son let me show you my ways these are the secrets of the lord that are with them that fear him and he will show you not his principles his covenants There are many of us we would have received certain things from our parents and our loved ones but sadly some of them went to the grave with secrets they never told you because this honor made it difficult to get it across to you if this is all you know you have found something that can make you great god loves everybody but not everybody is his friend read your bible he didn't say you all are my friends mm -mm. i died for you yes you are my children yes i'm your lord yes but there are people he says you are my friend moses come to talk with you how are you today and he talks back to him he came in the cool of the day to talk to adam and talk to eve when dishonor happened he said that's it i preach we're going to pray this night lord i found the key i found the key this is the kind of meeting that afterwards you will send your pastors tonight and say pastor sir let me teach you how to honor in one minute
many of you don't know how to honor God bless you for me sir it's not honor there are many people who have blessed my life just to let you know you are one of them that's foolishness that's not honor the goal of honor is to show someone that you perceive their uniqueness and the extent of their impact so you are going to within the context of the honor isolate them and give them an experience that will make you remain desirable in their eyes are we together just you know i'm blessed by your message commanding result thanks that's not honor that's expression honor must carry your discernment through it transfer your discernment to words and communicate it sam i just want to let you know that i am grateful there are so many worshipers and so people but there's something about your voice and the grace of god upon your life every time you raise that song my spirit is lifted the other day you raised a song you didn't know what i was what was happening to me that's honor he may forget what you said but he will mark your face the next time he sees your face he will associate it with pleasantness and you become his friend there are people whose persona reflect pungency people avoid you because of a track record of what your persona and your face creates in people it must change that one is not an evil veil it's a self-inflicted veil as a result of not discerning the law of honor every time i see this my children they honor me and you see how i i hug all of them from the depth of my heart there was one day one of the other ones wanted to just come and hug and pat me in the back and i drew his ears i said don't do that again you are a child when you grow we'll let you know you have grown now you are a child when you are hug hug with respect you will be doing it because of my ego is a training if not you will lose touch with don't be afraid to correct people really love them sometimes we think that when you correct people is a proof of insecurity let them not say maybe they are rising no what then is the if when you have labored over people you are a stakeholder over their growth there's nobody staying under my roof and under my care physically or spiritually that will go out of the boundary of discipline and correction no you choose to be a fugitive like a prodigal son you will go but provided you are within that house there is a level of decorum that you should have is god blessing us yes teach your children to honor let a grown child not come and slap a visitor hold him knock his head in front of the visitor and say the bible says honor your father and your mother forget the cry that is happening the message is getting in whenever you see a man that has done what you have not done don't think it was a mistake have the fortitude to give that respect those who's those who fight kung fu you go to most of these places where they fight kung fu these temples you will see bruce lee's picture is still there they stand and they respect it before they start fighting man is long gone but they say don't deceive yourself that because you're a black belter you are bruce lee bruce lee was in a class of his own but there are bills now there are people every man of god is the same same holy spirit same god until your results prove otherwise honor does not kill honor does not reduce honor multiplies honor fast tracks listen to me my dear ladies let me tell you this master honor and you would have mastered the key to any man's heart gentlemen let me teach you this master honor will master the key to both the hands and the resources and the credibility of any man there are people i can endorse and i can stake my reputation even if they are wrong i will step in for them because they have communicated honor are we together tonight we are going to pray our time is gone but it's worth it this is this is the kind of meeting that will change your life that you will leave this place knowing that something has happened you didn't just come to fast and pray for nothing is someone ready to pray I'd like you to stand up and just think for one minute. We're praying just for about five minutes. 
but don't pray just 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 in the quietness of your spirit i want you to think of the doors that can open right now when you practice this law the lord connected you to a consular officer you would have had free access to visas if you maximize that moment and honor the person you dishonor the person only for you to go and get a visa you find out that it was him one day you met with a ceo in a shopping mall you didn't maximize the moment now you are low a job and you suddenly realize the person is the ceo and the words that you spoke that day now stands against you i want you to think carefully the doors that would have opened oh lord i would have gotten that project so you gave it to me but dishonor retrieved it back from think of the levels of the anointing that you would have been working in right now it's not a very difficult thing for men to speak good about your life it's not a difficult thing for people to say lift this person lift this person lift this person but dishonor killed it does the influence of great people matter to you does the track record and the relationships they have does it matter to you do you think god can use it to lift you does the anointing of a genuinely anointed man matter to you do you think when that grace leaves you your life will change is discernment i'm not teaching you human worship i'm teaching you to begin to interpret things and people honor you find a way of reciprocating it back learn this today don't just collect honor don't just collect honor ah this apostle joshua selman take a seat kneel down lie down roll on the ground no as they sow that seed from it sow it back so that you create a harvest if children honor you honor them back if your contemporaries honor you honor them back if those above you honor you honor them back if those below you honor you honor them back let it be a system of honor you will look like a fool for a while you will look cheap for a while until the results separate you in a cadre that is incontestable you become the song in the mouth of every great man everyone is looking for a chance to lift you the way people call me all the time apostle is there something we can do for you apostle is this and that and i say i'm okay god is faithful can i and i say ah this is the honor honor when people think about you what comes to them is it the desire to lift you is it the desire to bless you let me tell you this this gentleman you see come kenny this kenny you are seeing this boy you see serve for years this kenny will cook for me and do a lot of things as you are seeing many things happen around his life and he still made up his mind and i knew that i said this guy is going to be a great man of god one day i'm telling you this it's not just because he's here you see that gradually gradually god began to lift him the grace of god upon his life almost every great man in this street that you see that you desire there is the story of their lifting except your own you want to route your lifting through a window an angel of justice will keep you there and say go back it doesn't happen that way it is only thieves that enter through the window there are people who are too big to serve in a department you can see shadrach where is he this is come this is the pastor of shadrach is the pastor of um of living word and he's one of the protocol people pastor francis is outside the assistant pastor this big man is in for nonsense without result is a cause from hell when you come and see great people serving let it be a lesson that you open your heart and say god whatever must land upon my life let it land let me tell you scattered in this ministry are men and women who have their own ministries and their own groups the grace upon their lives even some overseers don't have it yet they come and you see them quiet they just sit down there are people who come here and want to inconvenience everybody to say i'm around who do you think you are who sit down there and listen and learn 
so that when they rise tomorrow you don't say it's luck i love this my dear people and honor them you see me give them the right of way to do certain things and sometimes you are wondering is because honor has been proven when your honor has been proven the access becomes unlimited sometimes there can be something to do i can just sit back and allow them to be doing it and sometimes i come and i say no no, no let them continue there is a reason for it who knows you and whose track your who who has a testament of your track record there is nobody that rises from nowhere you are the lord of yourself a boss of yourself i shared with you my story that i played keyboard for reverend emmanuel and Mechi for many years many years no payment no nothing my own keyboard i will carry it and trek to the hotel and play the only thing i was ever given was one bottle of Fanta and one cassette. Honor. Oh, when you sow that seed, then there is a grace you must carry. When you sow that seed, there is wealth that you must carry. Are you ready to pray? In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace. Whatever pride that needs to be destroyed, is someone praying in my life and in this season, I have dishonored my parents spiritually physically I have dishonored those who have lifted me academically I see my lecturers and I push them away just because I am now a graduate I've seen my pastor and just because I'm now a man of God I see the pastor that raised me and I dishonor him lift your voice and pray someone pray he that honors me, I will honor. He that dishonors me, I will esteem. Are you praying? Listen, listen. You are really going to pray from the, your heart and say, Lord the eyes to see who is worthy of my honor and the unashamedness to communicate that honor i receive the grace lift off your voice and pray your neighbor is a wealthy man but you believe you are all neighbors you have a relative that has never been out of job and yet you have been looking for a job for decades and you have not seen a need to honor that grace pray you are trusting god to get married yet you insult every married person insult the wife insult the husband insult the children and you want the same blessing cannot work that way you want a flourishing ministry and you castigate everyone that God has helped. Koinonia, are you praying? Outside, pray. Those online, pray. It's a secret. It's an ordinance. It's a system in the kingdom. The principles that are supposed to lift you, you dishonor them left, right, and center. Yet you want the same results. No, sir. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace. It's a season of extraordinary fruitfulness. Within these seven days, grace, grace. I may look weak, I may look cheap. But let the blessings of honor distinguish me. Sharabagadabalash, embrekete barakato shabrede kedesh, rakata barato sedeba shebalahus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like you in your mind where you are. The five or ten people you know in your life 
that have paid attention to you and have truly communicated honor listen not those you want to honor those who have honored you and have said sam i respect you i honor you you know anybody that has made you a big deal lift your voice and bless them and pray for them from your heart lift your voice and bless them if it's the people in your department bless them if it's the people in your life bless them lord you must lift my brother lord you must lift my sister they have honored me they have discerned the grace of god upon my life they have invested in my grace is someone praying Shali sabaranda kaposha brigades eketepa lakata bragado sedekeshia hallelujah if i die today it is gain for me not for god's program if i die today it is gain for me as an individual but god's program on earth will suffer a heavy blow so what do i do as proof that i love him reject and cast the spirit of death anywhere i see it not out of fear but out of my desire to see that i'm alive and strong to continue advocating the frontiers of the kingdom if you love god don't die don't die soon live long remain alive you think i'm just motivating you tonight's message we're just warming up i have some serious things to talk about here let me tell you this brothers and sisters hear me africa is coming under siege nigeria is coming under siege there are powers that have intelligently been coordinating a campaign to frustrate the purposes of the Christ and because believers do not understand the territorial dimension of kingdom advance we continue to flatter ourselves in the palace like Esther whereas Haman is already plotting the defeat of God's people but thank God for Esther's thank God for Esther's doesn't mean you're a lady Esther is a prophetic office thank God for Esther's the saviors that shall arise from Zion are we together there are principles i want to share with you now the remnant that will preserve the purposes of the christ and make that preservation transgenerational take note of the word transgenerational by the grace of god if christ tarries i want to be able to stand from the shores of heaven and see that god's program still continues because we supplied a template that could not be bent hmm. we mentored believers in a way and manner that even though we have gone they still continue to stand to see that the purposes of christ is advanced let me tell you this the jews and those in israel were very wise although many of them have not personally come into the knowledge of christ but they have used the principles of judaism to understand that it is not enough to be connected to the god of abraham isaac and jacob our territory must also come and so when the neighboring nations fight territory they say no believers have this foolish understanding that because the purposes of christ is only in our hearts what do you need land for what do you need this for are we together now yes there are cities that when you entered you can almost not find land for church do you know why because the territorial dimension of kingdom advance was not taught the leaders in those days when there were free lands to get they thought that evangelism is all about once jesus is in your heart no worry how how long do you have to live and the platforms right now believers are stranded to have a place of worship is a problem because it's a campaign that was taken with intelligence over decades and the leaders as well-meaning as they were they were not strategic enough in understanding the territorial dimension of kingdom advance but in the name of jesus under our watch and in our lifetime 
not only individuals will lift up the name of the lord we will compel territories we will hijack the mind control systems the strata that manipulates the understanding of men this is what we are living for and it will happen we are not noisemakers there is a power and a force that backs us we do not speak cunningly devised fables we have been given the blueprint of god's program and we are following accordingly usually we will look like talkatives until you see it come to pass and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house you know every time i read that scripture i know that god was not talking to somebody and asking me to share that idea he was writing it and saying apostle joshua selman see it this is your mandate i've taught you here that you must find where it was written about you in scripture not prophetically directly not everything written in scripture was for the saints alive many of them were written waiting for the real owner of that prophecy i found things in this bible i believe they were written for me it's true hallelujah i would share with us four principles tonight if you love jesus christ and you desire to see a generation after a generation if you desire to see nigeria the north kaduna state africa and indeed the globe stand and honor the name of the lord then pay attention to the things i want to teach you number one the first principle allocated by god's wisdom for territorial takeover thank you is the warfare dimension of prayer and intercession the first principle given to the saints by which we compel territories to come under the influence of the christ is the priestly ministry of prayer and intercession take it high for me mike listen believers please look at me prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for saviors there is no such thing as I don't pray because I'm not a prayer warrior. And when I talk of prayer, remember that I've weaned us away from this baby channel, uh, uh, canal, milk-like prayer of give me tea, give me bread. He said, ask me for the nations. We're talking of prayer. John Knox prayed a prayer and said, Lord, give me Scotland, not give me an estate. Give me a territory or take my life. That you can carry one city and cut a map and put it in your prayer altar and that becomes your prayer lord to see your glory and gulf zaria no way for darkness a new spirit is about to be introduced in the territory and angels clear them out of the way because the saints are alive the bible says hell had enlarged itself there are spirits that have not yet come to africa but will come i hope you know that all we see is not all there is there are inventions of mysterious sicknesses that the devil wants to send but there must be men and women who are true watchmen not just watchmen as talk i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower Men who can pray darkness away. Men who can pray light into being. Men who can pray until a savior arises. Anna the prophetess. There's no record of scripture that she was praying for a husband. I hope you know she was a widow. She had a legitimate ground to say, Oh Lord, while I'm visiting you now, sort my life. She said, leave the issue of my life now. I continue to pray until my eyes see the consolation of Israel. When Jesus was brought to the temple, she said, Now, let my soul rest. I, I'm ready to go. I finally seen him. Hi. May God raise those kinds of Christians in our days people who are concerned about the program of god more than the personal interests of tea and bread don't get me wrong these things are important but your heart when you study the world's revival evan roberts evan roberts was 26 years old 
when God used him to shut down the city of Wales 26 many of you here are older than him when this revival happened the young man began to pray and say Lord I am tired of seeing this kind of Christianity I see within my territory powerless Christianity and he began to pray and for a period of six months he was going to heaven every day every day from between the hours of 12 and 4 he would have a divine visitation it was the product of that visitation they got a little school for him to just start a little program and that was where the fire started people will read about what happened in Wales in the newspaper and right there that fire will engulf them Smith Wigglesworth prophesied that it will happen again yes he told Lester Sumro that it will happen again he said before you die make sure you don't die with this anointing find young men transfer this mantle upon them so that we, listen this thing we are carrying did not just start with us it's a relay I don't know how old what is on me is all I know is that I received it it's like an Olympic torch it's easy for us to sit down and criticize our fathers criticize the founders of different movement they brought error they brought this and run our mouths and talk nonsense and not know that now the stage is ours do you not see the eyes of Eli becoming dim do you not see that the time is almost finished and God is calling on Samuel Samuel you are sleeping wake up Eli is about to go it's a call for a generation I speak what I speak in parables but it is true the eyes of Eli is closing and if Samuel does not wake up and become that prophet whose word does not fall to the ground we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you we will raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you it's an anthem for a generation we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in our glory Sit down. There used to be a song that we sang in a seminary that our generation will call your name. This is not a sermon for tea and bread. This is not a sermon for give me this. God will do it. But we're talking of nations. The ministry of warfare and intercession. That an anointing must come upon a generation to pray not for the purpose of showing who is more powerful there has to be a grace it's a corporate mantle it's not just prayer groups it's starting now as little prayer groups little a time will come there will be no leader it's a grace homes will become prayer altars schools will become prayer it does not matter who wants to say what it is an ordinance signed by God's integrity. Let me tell you this. 
if we cannot pray as a generation we're in trouble darkness will stamp us and stamp our children oh Haman do not rejoice Esther is still in the palace Esther is still in the palace and she still has access to Hazarus that which has been signed can be changed listen to me the days that are coming are days when we have to trust God to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus all this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread we are talking of nations our children are in trouble Vela Sibra Haskadabarakoteshilia Hasia Jele Sabarusias and Navahashila Katus, Hela Barutas Cabarinda Gadishia Haza, Rata Baraka to Jeleke Baria, Scataba, Jada Sidas, Ebre Sigate Lesia Hasabandaka, Raparuto Supra Catiana, Rata Cinemas, Kele Barutasia, men carrying things that belong to a generation not a program, not a conference, carrying mantles that are generational. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Verse 10. See, I have this day set you over territories nations and over kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build God is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in Kano is yours God is sharing nations and saying I, I allocate territories Who can sing for me that song? We'll bow down and say you are God. You know the song?
Please sit down. Please sit down. We have to make progress tonight. Hmm. Listen to me. There are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory. Every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers. Listen to me. These spirits influence culture. These spirits create negative patterns in the minds of people. They are called familiar spirits. There is a reason why they are called familiar spirits. They are spirits that have dwelt with people. They grew up with people. I shared this morning during the church service that one time I remember I was in Shiroro. We were ministering in a crusade and I saw a group. It was up to 15 or 16 people, women. It was a pattern I saw there. The moment the women gave birth, they became deaf and dumb immediately. I said, what is this? It was no longer a sickness. Listen, when you see a widespread of a pattern, it's a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits. There are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a CEO. This one was a customs officer. But right now, if you give him 10,000, he will say thank you. What happened? These powers. There are churches. There are territories where a church cannot survive five years. Impossible. Something must happen. The man will die a scandal would tear him down something must happen there are powers when daniel began to pray the prayer was affecting the spirit of the medis and the persians the spirits that controlled medopersia his prayer daniel was not saying lord sort me out uh -uh. he found out that the time of the captivity of israel in babylon had come to pass and he started praying I, Daniel, understood by books. I read and I saw that by this time in prophecy, we should not be in captivity. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And he began to pray. And when he began to pray, heaven, don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know. This is not about New Testament and Old Testament. It's what happens in the realm of the spirit. The moment they began to pray, Gabriel, the angel that brings messages, the angel of service, that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth, he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the Bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. There is ranking in the spirit, a prince, not a traditional ruler a prince let me tell you this the foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why satan will tear nations down all these childish teachings that continue to move around that negates the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation Some of those teachings are deceptions, activities of lying spirits.
the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons we are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there we are watching a woman barren her daughter barren granddaughter barren we say nothing is happening how can you say nothing is happening a grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land there is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18 once you are more than 18 it does not disturb you it's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers he's not disturbing babies he's not disturbing the young people the old people already they're already there but those teenagers I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers their resentment for God their obsession for technology they are outspoken that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion and we are watching saying nothing is happening one day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory they are doing it there is a spirit making it happen Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us, we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. You just think they are being stubborn. No! It's a spirit. The spirit of defiance. The spirit of rebellion. When those age ranges become our governors and our senators, that's when you will see the full assault of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. god has men elisha said tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in israel not there is a god in israel hallelujah you do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream tv if there is the name jesus there is the name holy spirit there is the name eternal life it falls under the same category as some of those words that we they don't allow to be pronounced including god jesus ah. you tell a preacher to preach and there's no name jesus there's no salvation there's no god there's no redemption what is he preaching The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men it's not their ability to inflict sickness no that's cheap it's not their ability to bring death that's cheap but to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the god of this world who blinded their mind the god of this world there are gods that station within territories there are territories where you don't find old men. The oldest man is 43. Because anybody that crosses it dies. I've seen territories like that. There are territories where all their men are dead. The territory is full of women. Because all the men die. 
Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was only the male figures in your family the devil took their lives away and left the women. Was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male two years and above that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there. And while that is happening, we are laughing. You know, I've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard on fire, get water and soak your own. Don't laugh. The same fire is coming to you. We must pray, oh. We must pray. There are spirits. We must pray. When I came, I was asking Ejimi about the testimony of the dear lady, one uh, precious lady that I came, I met. I saw you people so excited and I wanted to know what was going on. And when he told me the story, I said, you see it now? And someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind. Are you joking? Are you joking? I've seen demons so this is not something I'm just talking I've seen them the first time I saw a real physical demon it was then in the campus I was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as I turned I saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me I'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables. I've seen these spirits. They are real. I know what they do on earth. I know what they do in families. There are controlling powers that destroy marriages. If you do not stand your ground, I love you, I love you is nonsense. Just keep going. One day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was dear for you. And this spirit will land on your head like a mantle. And you see what happens to you. What of men who kill their children? Have you not seen a trend recently now? A trend of rape. Rape. Huh? That all these guys just come and just rape ladies. Do you think those guys are just driven by desire? Are they not prostitutes? No. It's more than desire. It's a spirit. There is something it seeks to do. Sodomy is a spirit. You know that, right? There is something it does. And pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down Joseph told his brothers, I had a dream. It's not my fault. I went to bed and I had a dream. The sun, the moon, 11 stars. And the brother said, that's all right. They were the ones who were going to kill him. Listen, we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way. We must learn to pray these distractions. You see the things that are happening in Zaria now? Some of the developments, the roads... Don't you think it's technology that is bringing it? It's a signature of the prayer of the saints. Shut down the prayer of the saints in this city. Then you will know what Satan has always wanted to do. I believe in the ministry of prayer. It is not the issue of being a Pentecostal. The days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon. You are praying to secure your children. Listen, let me tell you, this day and age, listen, do you know if your child leaves home to go to school, you should pray. What happens to that child from the door of your house to school? That child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know. by evening he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep daddy what is this and you say who taught you say my teacher taught me 
Your teacher, yes, sir. Controlling powers. Koinonia is not thriving just because Satan does not know we are here. It's thriving because of the invincibility of prayer fire. I said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry I supervised by myself. And there is a reason why. Because of the strategic role that they play. Now every department plays that strategic role. But because of the spiritual component, the prayer department, the worship team, you always see me on their case with the leaders. There is a reason why. Because let me tell you the truth. When these instruments just become music, we are in trouble. When this singing just becomes entertainment, we are in trouble. When the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship, we are in trouble. And the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night. most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces that shape the minds of people. A lady sent me a text recently. She just graduated. As soon as she graduated, she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street. Now, do you think an intelligent person will behave like that? It's a spirit. How many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home, a little kekena pep just turned and left them there till a truck came and climbed them? How many people have you seen final exam, final paper, they just find something on the ground and say that's it, you are gone. There is no such thing that is just, it's no coincidence. It's the manipulation of spirits. You have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere. Let them know you are alive. Start with your atmosphere. Sometimes I walk around my house in the night. Especially when I'm around. I'm just walking around my house. Do you know, not too far from my house, there is a graveyard. I've not seen one ghost. One. One ghost. Where will it enter and come to my house? I'm dealing with matters of destiny, not, not a ghost coming from somewhere. What business has the dead, the living, to do with the dead? I even wanted to buy the place. They told me that there are, there are graves there. Ah, Apostle, don't buy. Why? Yeah, you, are, you are dead, you are dead. One time... Archbishop Benson Idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl. I think it was an incantation. And he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it. <laughs> they had already caught it. Say, why waste? Why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice? God does not love wastage. He said, gather the crumbs that there be no wastage. See, let me tell you this. If you do not know the power of prayer, you will fear demons to death.
Hallelujah. We sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses. I know a man, true story, in Joss, years ago. He was slapped by, I don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit. He, he works then in the teaching hospital. And he said he used to hear, that means the, um, what they call that place, doctor? Where they keep, mortuary. In the night, while doing his work, true story, he will hear like discussions. You know, like people have woken up and they are talking. True story. And one time he attempted, he shouted, according to him, he said, shut up. And he, I don't know whether he, he wanted to open the door or something. I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. And the, the, the spirit slapped him until that man died. He did not recover. Spirits are real. Don't wait till you see them. They are real. My mother once told me a story. They went to bury someone. This thing did not, I'm, I'm not sure it's more than six, seven years. They went to bury someone and physically, as they were dropping the coffin, fire, physically, fire came out and killed some people. Not parables, not vision. Fire came out and killed some people. Have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house? All these things will remain when there is no prayer. Just saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. That's not the way it works. We are legislators. We enforce things. We don't just wish things. This wishing mentality will cost the church a lot. No, it's impossible. Who am I that the devil will not come? Jesus went to fast. Satan went to join him. He was fasting. Satan was fasting too. He was waiting there for 40 days for Jesus. Who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity? From whence comest thou, Jesus asked Satan. He said from voyaging to and fro. There was not a place that he did not go to. Have you considered my servant Job? Yes, I came to his house. It's only that he built a fortification and I could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, their shops in many areas they are losing in business why because some touts somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther parakatusiata you sense anything around your vicinity you don't wait to understand what it is tap your wife and say wake up when you do that twice three times one month the devil will know where to pass see let me tell you this whatever you allow to happen to your life don't blame God whatever you allow to happen to your family don't blame god I'm, I'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood not a need driven prayer hallelujah i heard of a man recently for one four years I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to be sure so that i don't exaggerate anything four years the wife refused to get pregnant the man was tired one day he came back from fellowship the wife was sleeping he came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy no i mean it if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking he was tired of this thing and said no he knelt down. You just sleep. You are my wife. I'm the one who paid your dowry. Let me face this spirit of barrenness. See, there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually. And stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory, within your family. Hallelujah. I was so encouraged when I heard it literally prayed not like impartation or yet no he sat down knelt down 
on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed you can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life there are times that you can put your job your 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 certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you our generation has not understood the power of prayer those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer mm -mm. Mm -mm. they don't negotiate they decide and agree god are you in this if god says yes declare anything that stands the way hallelujah praise the lord a prayerless christian is a powerless christian a prayerless territory is a powerless territory a prayerless couple is a powerless couple a prayerless business is a powerless business a prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry please sit down boy our time is gone the first key to territorial dominion is priesthood koinonia pray don't just pray on tuesday pray pray you go back this night trust god for grace even if it's 15 minutes walk around your room a little before you lie down apostle you don't know how busy i am that is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life if you search for excuses you will always find one let me tell you this i have taught you and i pray you will believe it master the power of night prayers master the power of night prayers a generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that would not be powerful i'm telling you this see there is a time when you will enter your sabbath in experience a young man personally now it's not i'm not saying this is the bible it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six and you don't have time for your destiny you are building rubbles the night is when men who are men pray the night is when men who are priests pray the night is when men who are watchmen pray the night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray let me tell you sincerely i have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep a sacrifice you are supposed to get a job that God will use to change your family and your territory and while you are sleeping they send a letter from a parastator we need these 41 names in the list and there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed and every other person is in a herbalist shrine forcing his name to remain there and you are snoring away your your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist i may not have access to the office but i can pray i can pray i've seen the ministry of angels in my life i know that angels are real I know that they are read when you pray there are times I've tried to look for things and I could not find them and I prayed and slept and in my dream I got up and went to where it was and I woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of Jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life i curse it now this night in the name of jesus all the movies internet browsing that distract you i'm not saying they are wrong 
but if it can sit down and distract your prayer life i separate you from it now it was in the night that jacob wrestled with god and got power it was in the night that god came to solomon and he received something men receive things in the night don't waste your night charge your atmosphere sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship while you are sleeping you are receiving you wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing see let me tell you these are not things we are these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. oh lord help our generation help our generation help our generation in the name of jesus christ hear me if you are a minister of the gospel in this place that means you are in ministry or you are trusting god to be in ministry please wake up i deliver you from laziness hear me ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed number two goodness the second principle or territorial dominion is the power of faith Hebrews 11 33 the power of faith you cannot take over a territory when you doubt God you cannot take over a territory when you do not believe God Hebrews 11 Please read, everyone. One, two, read. Who through faith uh -huh, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. Listen, the Bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. What is faith? Your conviction your depth of persuasion on who god is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe god and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny Ah, the Bible says that listen he said that Lot and Co were hijacked and captured and Abraham said what did I hear you carried my cousin gather all the war men and let us go Hi, courage courage faith the righteous are as bold as a lion that lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people the lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith 
when God called me to ministry I called my father and my mother and I knelt down before them and I told them God has called me all my life I'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said God bless you we bid you Godspeed go well that's it I'm not doing well because the church I was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what I said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that God is able the ability of God and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it God will never tell you what you can do you know you have had God when what he says is bigger than you when God told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when God showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray where you are pray from the depth of your heart Please pray from the depth of your heart. Pray everyone, you are praying in the spirit.
Shika Barato Sada Bradaga de Balarabu, Empreteke La Prasada Balato Bradiga de Balarabu. Kala baranda kata praske de balato sabra dige de balarabu. Empra taka prusa de belekete shala paria da balaraba. Prapadu sada branda gada baladu. Ete preteke le parusa zia labara. Se sacrifice you are making for your destiny. Se sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Paruta Salabara. Two more minutes. Pray in the spirit. Skabarada Balakata Bradegadesh. Skadebarada Balada Bakota Shada Bradegade Baladas. Emprata Kaparuta Shalabradegade Balad. Balabu shalabrandi gidi balas, ekete labradu shalabrandi gidi balada balada bo. Ke baru kasilabah siada balada bo. Alleluia, alleluia. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through you are building something for a generation you are building something that will last rain will come and go but what comes upon you comes and stays are we together now praise the lord let's continue the power of faith now faith is the bible says the substance of things hoped for and the evidence the tangibility of things not seen hear me everyone you want to take over territories you will need to believe in god not believe in an uncle not believe in an auntie not believe in an asset not believe in an investment you need to believe in god god is able I may not know how, but I know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory. Many Christians, and especially our generation, we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith. We doubt everything, and we do not take God at his word. I've given you a little story years ago when I used to bank those days with First Bank. Way before many of these facilities started coming, that we now use to make banking easier. Then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle alert. And I would stand up and start trekking to First Bank. I would queue for hours believing. Because I read in my Bible what things soever ye desire. When you pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless. 
but your faith is being developed the idea is not for you to go and see or receive something the idea is an exercise of your faith so that tomorrow when he says take this nation you say lord i'm able we are well able unbelief is dangerous my only limitation in my life is the voice of god and time my only limitation in life is the voice of god and time time that honors the law of process if god tells me to walk through this crowd to that door i will not even see that rain is falling i'm on my way going whatever stands my way the faith that god gives do you not know that faith is a shield you can use faith as a shield he said, wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first to be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We are a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring. He said, well, you have to dig by believing God. If I perish, I perish. When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him. Enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages, being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home, brand new, out of the cave, slot it in, and there are koinonia messages all. How do you explain that? That's what happened when faith. Listen, you will never see the glory of God until you believe. You will never see the glory of God until you believe. We're a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move. Your only guarantee is the word of God. The word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do from the days when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal I believe that was a career of the blessing from the day when I could not pray for one person to be healed of headache I believe that his anointing was upon my life and I believe that he was going to use me we are going to pray one prayer. I'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain. I'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen. So now you are going to pray. Help my unbelief. Lord, whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you, help my unbelief. I claim that I trust you, but it's really my uncle that I trust. I claim I trust you, but it's really my certificates that I trust. I claim I trust you, but it's really my skill, my gift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. 
Shila Parus Kariada Balarabadaba. Koinonia pray. He reigns, he reigns, he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns, my God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, hear me. You need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say, Lord, I believe you. I may let everyone call me stupid, but I believe you. Let everyone mock me and laugh at me, but I believe you. I believe you. Your word is true, and I believe you. When you say I am great, I believe you. When you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. But as it is, you look so weak and you will not believe it. You don't know the village I come from. I cannot even speak English well. That's not what God is saying. Believe me and let me take you there. By myself. Years ago, when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government, I believed him. Our very first crusade, I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land. We didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time. Every one of our crusades that we had gone, I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings. I believe God. It's none of your business who my father is. It's none of your business who my mother is. That's not what God said. That's not the condition for his word. I believe him. The same way some of you are here and God, you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals. You wake up in the morning and say, it's a lie. It's not for people like us. We are the any house. Stop that, that ungodly talk and say, Lord, with all humility, I believe. Let it come. I believe you it was in Port Harcourt I was tending to a sick one of our sick aunties where I was staying in 2007 I was in Port Harcourt and she was on her sick bed she eventually died and I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there and I was there we were running shifts and then from the I don't know which of the floors now. I just looked at um, the window 
and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and in that vision I saw the international headquarters of this ministry I saw 37 flags and I saw white men I saw nations coming I said what is this and God said that's where you are going I believed him I said let's go oh God let's go I believe you God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience I believed him I believed him I believed him do can you believe God one day I remember growing up I told my mother I said do not worry about the things that are happening one day you will eat and never have to beg for bread again and it will be in your lifetime I said it see the righteousness of faith speaks it does not assume you make statements that sometimes you are afraid my wife right now we may be soaking Gary but in the name of Jesus we will give to nations and when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say foolish man respect yourself my faith it reaches out to you I believe your word for me today. My faith reaches out to you. I believe. I believe your word for me, word for me today. Listen, one day. I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said son I will give you a gold mine I believed it literally I know it may have a prophetic meaning but I believed it literally until three years ago when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine God said it and I believed it see listen let me tell you this this ego and the feeling of saying let them not say I believed God and it was a lie if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust God so what if you find out it's not God that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow God said it but I'm ashamed I'm afraid let them not laugh at me I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance it was a stupid thing it was suicidal but I did it and God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again I remember it was in this ministry God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry literally 0.00, .00 and I believed him stupidly believed him one week after that God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from. But I know whom I believed. If God says I will give you a house, believe him. If God says you will feed nations, believe him. If God says you will pay the school fees of a generation, believe him. Don't believe your ATM. Let God be true and every man a liar. Please hear what I'm telling you today. This life and this destiny, I stand before the God of heaven. And may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance. But there are many things. One of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens. There are many things that I've said. Today, Prof said something here that really touched me. Um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when God says it, he would do it. If he did it before, he could do it again. Same God right now. Same God right now. If he did it before.
before. If we did it before. When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and I said, sit down. Sit down. Today, it's amazing the way one by one it's already starting like droplets but it's an avalanche it will come and you will see the songs that come from here songs that will mentor nations songs of warfare songs of victory songs of the throne you see most times we don't believe men till it's too late we will say he said it all I believe him I believe you that's why you see me stand to teach you do you know let me confess true confession I was I had a meeting before coming here you know I had a meeting and then um, just briefly met with a family and then a woman before coming preparing to come for koinonia and while I was preparing I was so tired I sat down and I didn't know which one to do to eat or to rest and I stood I was so tired and I was telling the woman I said my God all I want to do now is to sleep but I just got up I said, I rebuke that statement. There is a generation to mentor. There are people to raise. And she said, ah, Apostle, I know you. As soon as you are done with all this talk, the zeal of the Lord that is in you, you will quickly go and prepare and stand up. And truly, you see me standing now. I'm done here and I'm counseling for hours. Seven in the morning, I'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function, do a few things and return. Sacrifice. But that happens because God said so. God promised me that he will keep me strong and vibrant. I believed him. You do what I do in the strength of the flesh. You will not be sick. You will die. Yeah. I say it without exaggeration. You literally will fall down and you will die. One day my father warned me and said, look my son, just do your best. Take out time once in a while and rest. I said, I know and I believe I will rest. But the king's business requires haste there are destinies to be raised there are impartations to come to nations hallelujah praise the lord i went to bed to five it was as if i just turned my head and i checked the time and it was morning the last thing i remember was that i was going to take there was water by the side of my bed and a drink and I remember I was preparing that in five minutes I would just turn and take a sip. And I had slept. It was already morning. And I got up, had to brush up on my notes to come. Why? Because when you are about his business, he will maintain you. There are things you cannot lie about. Not for long. It will be clear. See, let me tell you this. God has been faithful to me. You see these hands? I have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases. Communicable ones. I'm not supposed to be alive today based on the things and the people I have touched. You must believe God. God told me, forget about cars and houses. Focus on me. I've raised men already to do that for you. I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car. I was happy and God said, it's not your car. Just pray for him and let him carry his car and go. I wanted to say, God, the next time you will give me a lift. <laughs> but I was happy. Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired, you are just passionate, but 
listen let me tell you this you must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow if you love your today more than tomorrow the door has closed closed by you hallelujah praise the lord when i was in secondary school and the fire of god fell upon us we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called operation katakus yes we would pray sometimes immediately after preps it was supposed to be a little one hour prayer and some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them look go to your hostel and sleep one hour it will become a vigil i was made the timekeeper of the school in js2 that was the level of the hand of god that was upon my life quarter to five someone would wake me every day without fail quarter to five that was when i started having encounters with this i didn't even know that they were angelic encounters 15 minutes on the dot to five don't tap me i wake up father help this generation in the name of jesus help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit and the power that that realm wields upon this realm all you see is not all there is hallelujah so when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results mm. let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago i started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church i said this is mastery i must go down to see him he was in south africa and i traveled he's going to be with the lord now prophet kobus van rensburg I traveled to South Africa to meet him and I met him and I told him why I was here. I was not there for, for pilgrimage. I was not there for entertainment. I was there for business. I said, I desire this grace. I desire it. It is a grace. 10,000 crutches cannot be mistaken. No. Many unbelieving members, yet they were also raising crutches. You could see that they didn't have faith yet they would say walk and joke with it you see many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace you will cheaply receive that grace listen when you receive that grace and receive that dimension many times you will see how cheap it works some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of god is here and it will be as if you are acting drama and even you you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing 
many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tightened yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay lord forgive me now i'll start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see results. number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg i'd wanted going to meet robert Lerdan and then charles and francis hunter unfortunately i couldn't meet them i sat down and i listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house i listed them and i searched for the individuals that had those graces like a chef says i need salt where do we buy salt sabo where do we this is how i listed these graces like a bee and i searched for them one by one i was very very foolish at a point in my life i knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that i would need for my life and i would need for this apostolic office i pursued dr miles moon my Mudok, and bishop david oyedeko these were the two dimensions of of wisdom that came to my life i saw the wisdom of god at work in their life and i said this foolishness must end i pursued that grace i pursued it with all my heart are we together yes results whoever commands results becomes the leader whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with i submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry they are not guesswork there is an exact knowledge that is back of them they will continue to be reproduced again and again when there is increase when there is the outstretched hand of god when there is favor there is prosperity when there is passion and hunger for god these are results please do not join the people who ignore results i'm wrapping up i know the rain is done but just just be patient make sure as they are coming out they are still listening please you are going to pray for results listen to me 
I told myself, God, there is no need to be in ministry if I'm not producing results. That you bear fruits and that your fruits abide. Much fruits. Some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that God is here. You met him. It's called results. The next time you come, you will not come alone. Let me tell you, empty pews are proof of lack of results. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is true. Are we together? In fact, empty anything, emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you. I knew I saw the way pastors used to raise money. Now, please, I'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of God and the body of Christ. But I saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money. I saw the way pastors, birthday pastor, I'm, I said, no, this is not Bible. But then I asked myself a question, how will you eat? And how will the ministry thrive? And then I said, I have to go to the word of God and find out. And then I found out that God can open a door for a man that no man can shut. I found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of God. Let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found. 1 Corinthians 29, 12. I apologize, we're wrapping up. 1 First, First Chronicles 29, 12. 1 Chronicles 29, 12. I saw this scripture in my dream. I was sleeping and this scripture came and I woke up and I saw it and I rejoiced. I said, that means God is shifting me to another dimension. Both riches and what? Honor come from you. You reign over all of them. It's a dangerous scripture. Both riches and honor come from thee you reign over all and in thy hand is power and might look at all the things we need in one verse riches honor power might greatness strength god is the owner i saw it in my dream i went to sleep home and i saw that scripture i got up and i searched it i said this is this if this scripture were a clot, it would have faded by now. I've prayed this scripture into my life. See, I stepped into the grace for favor when I prayed for favor for one month. That was my prayer request. Not for a selfish reason. Lord, a man can carry favor bodily. Let me be an example of it. Do you know many times when I pray these things, it's so that I will bring it and you will receive. It's not so much for myself. When I received the grace for long life, it, it was with speed. The day I was coming for Koinonia, it was as if I was going for my wedding reception. Give me a chance, let me stand. These people were singing and I couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that I would climb up. I came with a grace that I did not have. The grace for long life. You can carry graces like a fisherman. When you catch something and you push your hook, you draw it, force it out when you see what it is. This kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries. Deep mysteries. Deep mysteries. Hallelujah. Both riches and honor come from you. Thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great. Look, God is the maker of greatness. When God selects you to be great, he selects you to be the face of a generation. It doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it. God has chosen this ministry God has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation. It's an honor we receive. He made it so. Results. We're going to pray. 
we have to wrap up listen to me koinonia hear me my heart is pained if your life does not command results let it first start from your life then we'll start commanding results over territories was it not joshua that told the son to stand results there are results that can shut down a nation in one day a time will come kings will come to seek the counsel of god from us and say what is god saying he said kings will entreat your favor when god told me he would give me access to kings and i would speak to kings in this nation i believed him listen it's not pride in two weeks i'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting all of them gathered in one place the international conference center and i will be speaking to them the counsel of god when god says it i believe it listen it, this thing is not it's not it's not about a man i hope you understand what i'm saying results are powerful if you doubt results then what are you at results you must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit i'm tired of green leaves lord this fig tree must bear fruit he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results honor my life with results please pray Jesus the grace that will cause you to reproduce every result you see here may that grace rest upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the grace that will bring you into strange dimensions wonder walking dimensions of results may that grace rest upon your life I speak upon your life access to kings may that grace come upon you access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ 
I have set before you an open door. I decree and declare the kind of influence that God can put upon a man. Influence is not a carnal desire. It is so that you can rise to a point where the nations can look up to your life. In the name of Jesus, the grace that can cause a generation to look at a man and follow Christ through that man, may that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. The grace for strange signs and wonders, wonders of the spirit, may that grace come upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every man who must honor and recognize what you carry, I speak to them by prophecy in this season and in the name of Jesus in this month of October, I command someone must celebrate your grace. Someone must celebrate what you carry for the sake of his majesty. In the name of Jesus, I compel men to descend the grace upon your life. I compel men to descend the hand of God upon you. I compel men to descend the unction upon you. Father, we thank you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Let me pray one prayer concerning favor and your finances please allow me pray it God sees my heart God sees how much I pray for you every time there is a dimension of the blessings of the Lord that I want you to step into and the reason is because it will give you the time to serve him I pray for you in the name of Jesus the wealth that comes by prophecy I speak to your life Carry that grace now. 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 I command your bands to be filled with plenty. I speak wine and oil to your treasury. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor that the saints need to rise to the position of influence that will allow them to legislate on behalf of the kingdom. May the grace for that favor rest upon you. Enter into prepared blessings. Let me pray for you. Multiplied visions and spiritual experiences. hear me the spiritual blindness that stops your eyes from seeing what God is doing I tear that veil now I decree and declare everywhere you find yourself I compel the people there to look up to you as you look up to Christ listen don't sit back doubting what you are saying. No. Every utterance is backed by the throne. I'm not speaking as a man. When God calls men, he backs them. And that every door you must enter in this season. Because we advance through the entrance of doors. I speak to that door. Let it be open for you now. Let it be open for you now. Indeed, it will be said about us that we are a people that the Lord has helped. Marvelously helped like Uzziah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that our territory will come under the influence of your name and your grace. 
we will never give an inch of our territory to the reign of darkness and satan we will stand as watchmen until we see the reality of your power and your glory rest upon our land in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and amen our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle i want to make it right with jesus apologize because of the rain we've had to stretch but you are here and you are saying i need a fresh start with the lord jesus we have just one minute for you please be careful no moving around carelessly so that we can have those who are coming out to come if you're on your way coming here whether you are inside you're outside i like you to boldly or you are saying apostle i really want to rededicate my life to christ i know the implication of this that you have shared please boldly summon the courage take a step of faith as we clap and salute them come and stand right at the altar here while i pray for you god bless you people are coming celebrate them as they come koinonia is this the best you can do those coming from outside please clear the way for them clear the way for them god bless you god bless you koinonia keep clapping let's celebrate them as dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.